This is the uh, 10th anniversary of one of baseball's most unusual dual threat performances. Uh, Rick Ankiel, who won 10 games as a pitcher in 2000 for the Cardinals, hit 25 home runs in 2008, eight years later after he broke in, it, with his remarkable transition to an outfielder. He was the first and only National League player to do that, to have double-figure wins and hit at least 25 home runs as a position player. The only other player to do that in the history of the game was Babe Ruth. Who? Rick Ann Keel. <laughs> Rick Ann Keel also started a playoff game for the Cardinals and then hit a home run as a position player in a playoff game for the Atlanta Braves, the only National League player to have accomplished both those feats. Only one other player in baseball history did that, starting a playoff game or a postseason game and hitting a home run in a postseason game. That player was Babe Ruth. Who? So I would say pretty good company there. And for that, Rick Ann Keel is the winner of the Brian P. and Bob Burns Nostalgia Award. Thank you, Rick, and congratulations, Rick. Uh, it has uh, just been so much fun to go through the decades of all the guys up here, isn't it, that the Cardinals have so many guys to uh, hear from, from Lou Brock and Ted Simmons and Keith Hernandez. So, so glad that those guys uh, came back here, but that also includes uh, Tony LaRusso, Rick, and uh, Ray Langford representing uh, a decade that had a lot of things in it. Uh, it was the end of Whitey's years. It was Joe Torre's years. Uh, and then it was really the rebound resurgence of, of winning October baseball uh, with this man, Hall of Famer, uh, Tony La Russa, to my left. So I'm, I'm going to start with you, Tony, just, uh, just thinking about that, that first move here to St. Louis. Obviously, you'd been successful uh, in other places. But uh, were you excited when you first had that thought that maybe I could be a part of of something, and I call it a rebound, but a resurgence of October baseball here uh, in this great baseball town? Well, I was definitely excited because uh, in years 82, 5, and 7, as American Leaguer, I came to the World Series to observe, and uh, I was really impressed with the way the fans got behind it. I came to St. Louis for the games, didn't go to the, uh, to the American League city, and so when I had the chance, I remember when I first started, Sparky Anderson knew that I loved the game. He said, always go to the National League before you retire. So to come to the, uh, to the Cardinals was a, uh, a real opportunity, a treat. My only disappointment was, and it turned out great because the DeWitts have been amazing owners, but I loved the Clydesdales, and they were gone for a while. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I knew the history. Uh, I knew the responsibility, and I remember the first spring when I uh, got there in the uh, spring training and there's Lou and and Red and Stan and Gibby and I remember Gibby especially he gave me the Heisman like he says man you're an American leaguer you don't you're not good enough to be here like he still he scares me he actually. told me that last night again it lets you know what he's thinking. Uh, one of the constants throughout all of what went on in the 90s, and that also included a year where we had no World Series, and it was uh, the strike year of 94, but one of the constants for Cardinal fans uh, was to see Ray Langford play in center field. Uh, I say, I say a lot on the air, and I mean it as a great compliment to Ray, being his teammate for a short period of time, but then seeing him play uh, as long as he did. I believe the most underrated uh, Cardinal player in the last 30 years is right there, and a future Cardinal Hall of Famer. Thank you. In, in Ray Langford. So, so, Ray, you did see it all in that decade. I mean, you saw it all. You, you were there when Whitey, and you went through Joe Torre, and you went through the strike, and then Tony. Uh, uh, that's a lot of years to be in, in, in one uniform. What are your fondest memories of that decade? I was with Whitey in spring training. Mike Jerkinson was there for a minute. Then Joe Torre for, what, five years. Then La Russa. It was great. I had a great time. <laughs> it, was, it was great. But the thing about it, going into spring training, being around just all the guys. You know, as a kid, watching on TV, and now you, you have the opportunity to be in front of all these guys and, and practice with them and learn from them. I was just, just soaking it all in. 
For those that didn't see Ray play, and I assume most people in this room did, but maybe younger people, uh, you had a unique combination of speed and power and defense, and you're really a complete, you talk about a five-tool player, most home runs, Bush Stadium too, that man right there, Ray Langford. Uh, is that how you would describe yourself as a player? When I, when I got drafted by the Cardinals, you know, Bush Stadium was huge. You know, you was pitching there. You, Thankfully, you know yeah, I'm glad, was. yeah. Uh, and it was, you know, it was looking for guys that had speed, gap hitters, and I felt like I was that type of guy. So that's what it was all about. But over time, they brought the fences in, went to grass, and as I got older and started eating better, I got a little stronger and started hitting the ball at the ballpark. But uh, it kind of worked out for me and, you know, just had fun with it. I'm going to ask you about some of the guys that you learned from. Uh, again, this is a, a story of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and we're not done yet here tonight. But uh, the guys that were before you, uh, what did you get from them? Well, just with Ozzy, Vince, Willie, um, even with you, you know, um, just talking to pitchers on – on how they like to pitch certain guys, have an understanding of what's going on in the outfield. You have to know what your pitcher, what your pitcher is trying to do to the hitter. So just try to pick different pitchers' brains and um, hitters, and just kind of get an idea of, of, of what I want to do. Because you know, people can talk to you about a million things, but you got to just take whatever works for you and add it to your game, and then just go from there. What you did worked. There's no question about that in a Cardinal uniform, and I can say the same about uh, Rick Ankiel. We're talking about the 90s here. Rick, you entered the decade at the end of the decade, 1999. You were 20 or 19 maybe, I guess 20. The kid. Uh, and he was just a kid, and, and he was a kid. You're still around, and a phenomenal talent, obviously, Rick. And uh, you, you, you break onto the scene in, in 99. That's pretty heady stuff for a 20-year-old. Would you agree with that? Or you look back on that, that's pretty – Pretty heady stuff. I think at this age, I look at it, and I, I think it's heavy. At that age, I felt like this is where I'm supposed to be. As a young kid, all I dreamed of was being the best base, baseball player ever. Uh, and when all those things were happening, it felt like everything was just falling into place. And I remember showing up the first day in spring training, getting invited to the big league, big league camp, and Tony and Ray's there. Ray's driving a V12 Mercedes, 20-inch <laughs> rims. I'm like, I want to be that guy. <laughs> I don't think Babe Ruth even had one why, of those. Oh, uh, why? No, but um, um, seriously, it was, it was such an honor to walk into that clubhouse, and you have Ray Langford and Mark McGuire, and then we had Jim Edmonds and everybody that invited over then um, to walk in there and see your name, Ankiel, hanging in that locker room with all those special guys, and then Gibson and Lou Brock and every other one of those guys that show up. And all of a sudden, I'm there as just this little 19-year-old, little hot shot that they're all making fun of. But it's, it's one of those memories that I'll never forget. 11 wins as a rookie in 2000 the following year, which we're counting as part of the, the decades, the end year of the 90s. Uh, and then you run into a roadblock, and uh, you've written a book that I, I know you're very open about that roadblock, and, and pitching just, uh, just wasn't – it wasn't working anymore for you. What, what was that uh, like to go through that? I assume just a kind of a, a very difficult ordeal. Lonely and dark. And I don't want to leave this function tonight um, with people feeling bad for me because you shouldn't. I don't, I don't want anybody to read my book or hear my story and feel bad for me. Let me say this now. Because you shouldn't. And I feel like I'm a blessed person. I'm a blessed athlete. I had an opportunity to play for the Cardinals as a pitcher. Not only that, but come back as an outfielder in an organization that welcomed me back, where I don't think any other organization almost on the planet that would have welcomed me back and accepted that and gave me the chance to come back as an outfielder. That's true. So, yeah. So. To get an opportunity to do what I did and not only do it, but do it for the St. Louis Cardinals and then have that first game that I came back, be in St. Louis and hit that home run. And everything that I went through with Tony La Russa and Dave Duncan, Langford, you name it, Eric Davis, you go around a room and all these Hall of Famers that were there, Chris Carpenter, Adam Wainwright, Mike Matheny is my catcher, all these guys that I got a chance to share a locker room with, to shake hands with, to be teammates with, to respect and come back now as a Cardinal as respected as I am in the organization, it's such a beautiful thing. It's unbelievable. Well, Rick was able to come back in one of the most miraculous things that I've ever seen in baseball. And, Tony, I want to ask you about that. And I remember the day Walt Jockety, I asked him who was the number one minor league power hitting pro prospect when Rick was uh, no longer pitching and he was trying to work his way back. And he said, well, there's no question. It's Rick Ann Keel. And I thought he was kidding. So did what he did surprise you coming back hitting 25 home runs uh, as he did? Uh, you know, I hate the word surprise because that means you underestimate talent. I knew he had talent, but it was very impressive because you don't make that kind of rebound unless you can put one career aside and, and devote yourself to the other one. 
And I, you know, I was thinking before I came up about what I would say about Rick. First of all, uh, Lank was um, one of the best athletes of any generation. In fact, he's one of those guys that played the game easy, made the game look easy, but he was very productive. Uh, Ank played a little different style. He used to like to, he'd go to the wall and jump over. Rick, Rick would run through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> but here's what I wanted to say. You know, uh, coming in, I knew about the, uh, the Hall of Famers and a lot of people that played, coached, you know, Rick gets Kissel, the managers. But what I learned over the time was it, it was always began and ended with the character of the person. That's one of the things I, I really feel about the Cardinals, Cardinal fans support, but they, they're great players. have always been great people. And I wanted to put two cents in to tell you that, because uh, we're going to always back up here with some great ones like Carp and, and, and Adam and Eckstein, but Rick Ankiel would be tied for first with the best character that's ever been in a Cardinal uniform. This guy had so much talent, and what he went through with the pitching and the way some of the – it was um, showing up to where it embarrassed. But he refused to give in. He never blamed anybody. He always took it. And then he come back like he did. And what the man that he is now, the husband and father, I'll say it again. He's tied for first with the very best the Cardinals have ever had. Thank you. Thank you. Right. The other thing I'd say to you is I got here in 96, and – uh, we ended up having a wonderful year. It was really tough. It was a, uh, a great blend. You know, we had veterans like Ozzy and Willie. Uh, Andy Bennis was here. We had young guys like Alan Hope Bennis. Hope was there. And then Jay, uh, Brian Jordan and, uh, and, and Ray, Royce Clay. I mean, it was just a, a nice – we got a, struggled early, but once we got going, you know, we were one win from the World Series. Uh, and then we you know, got a little sluggish, and then we came back, and you saw the Big Mac uh, – he really put a charge back into this franchise. And here again, I was, we were just talking with uh, the guys that know him. Uh, Mark is probably one of the most humble, shy, best friends you'd ever want to have. Uh, and as you heard him during last year's Hall of Fame, he was totally blown away by the Cardinal fans, and he came back for you. And uh, so I think that part of the 90s, that second half, uh, really set the stage for what happened in the next decade. But it... Um, it started in 96 with a really tough and well-earned uh, playoff. And uh, by the time we got to the, towards the end of it, we had started to turn around. Well, we're so thankful that uh, Tony came to St. Louis and was able to be a part of that. <laughs> Tony LaRussa, Hall of Famer, Rick Ann Keel, Ray Lankford representing the 90s. Congratulations, guys.